it doesn't if, work. If you it doesn't if, work. If you're on the Etherpad with Aubrey just to help out with that information. Yes. 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 Are you our fearless leader for today? Excellent. No, I, 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 don't, I don't believe fearlessness will be required today. I think. I don't. Jealous. <laughs> 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 Let's see if, ah, there's a button. Uh, for those folks remote, an indication in the chat room that you can hear would be useful. And we are about to get started. We're waiting for a couple of key folks to float into the room. All right. At Hello. our previous meeting, we saw that the preferred meeting venue was just a dial in from in bed. <laughs> Score. Yeah. 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 I dialed in from uh, the. Uh, the, the restaurant for uh, TLS. I thought it was better than sitting in the room with all the people. And a note that says hearing is okay. Love that. Thank you. All right. Um, so we're going to get started here. I, we're waiting for Elliot to show, but, um, and Elliot showed. What a deal. Well, either way, um, welcome, welcome to meeting venue. Uh, we are. We had one request for an agenda bash. The agenda is now on the screen. Um, the one request for the agenda bash was to let um, Suresh go first, since it's basically a summary, and we think we're moving along rather nicely. Um, everybody okay with that? I, I, I see no screams of horror. So Suresh, why don't you go through your update? And you don't have any particular slides, do you? And, and, and there's a mic and a pink box that you're meant to stand in. Hey, all. I'm Suresh. Like, I'm author of one of the working group documents. That's the high-level meeting policy. So this one is like kind of converged like already last meeting. And we, are, we had like some small open items. So I actually had an open item section in the draft. And that's now gone. So the open items were whether attracting new participants is like an explicit goal of this policy. And uh, the consensus was it was not. So that's gone. And uh, another thing was like, uh, how do we uh, describe exploratory meetings? So uh, there's some meetings like, you know, the old Yokohama meeting, not the last one or the one before. 
and uh, like a Amsterdam meeting, which kind of ended up being exploratory meetings, but right now look like a regular meeting because they're on Europe and Asia, but they didn't have any meetings in Europe and Asia. So I added those things in there and uh, uh, removed the stuff about uh, whether we should do stuff by RI or not. Uh, so one of the things that came out was like, we don't want to define this with uh, too much precision. So we want to be like a little bit flexible on how the areas are defined. So we decided to not um, bike shed that thing. So that stuff is removed now as well. And um, I believe the document is ready for working group last call. And there's no open comments, but I'm willing to take any comments here or on the mailing list soon. So did anybody have anything for Suresh's document or are we good for a quick working group last call and send it off to the uh, IESG after that? I love the sound of crickets. All right, um, so that should be simple. We'll talk about next steps um, after we get done with Elliot's document, but um, I, I think we'll, I'll, we'll call I'll it back. good to go. Yeah. So you, you, your current rev that is out there is the one that you believe is wor ready for working group last yeah. call. Great. Perfect, thank you. All right, thank you, Suresh. Um, Elliot, would you prefer, I, I can drive slides and you can sit if you want, or if you, you want to be in the pink box or whatever works. Okay, so, um, or you can sit in the box, whatever you like. Um, <laughs> bring a chair, you know, or you can, yeah, I think if you sit on the floor in the box, the camera won't see you, so, um, wherever you want to be. Yeah, if you need to get up, you can get up. Okay, let me get the, the few slides up. They are out on the uh, meeting material site now. Uh, a little late, but you know, better late than never. Well, there's a mic right there too. So, all right. So we are discussing the selection process document. I posted a list of issues that I believed were resolved and issues that I believed needed more discussion if people wanted to discuss them. These are the issues save one that were, I thought people might want to discuss. And so I'm gonna go through these one by one just quickly and make sure that we are all on board with moving along. So the first was issue number six, which was I believe Andrew's initial terminology hard to follow comments. And I believe these are now resolved. No one spoke up to say, oh my God, we need to change terminology again. So I'm going to presume by the eyeballs looking at me, none of which are complaining that we're good to go. So that's going to be closed as resolved. Um, there was a, an issue number 15, distinction between two requirements. And I believe that was a misunderstanding on the part of participants, as I noted on the list. And so I'm going to close that with no change, unless there is some objection. If folks want me to, I've got the um, GitHub uh, that I can project, but if these are not recognizable to you and you think just fine, we'll expect you'll go over it again in working group last call. The um, issue 18, align mandatories with values, was Laura's message back in February. It got a little bit of discussion, but not very much. I'm basically gonna hold that issue open for working group last call review, and we'll talk about that in a moment. Um, but I think there's no particular change given our last two revs. There was issue number 22, which is about freedom of expression. I heard no one speak up that there needed to be any additional text. So I think that is closed with no change. And then there was issue number 23, no guns. I heard no support on the list for that, save the person who proposed it. So again, I'm uh, saying closing that with no change. Correct. Uh, uh, Barry's question from the floor was the issue for 23, uh, uh, 22 or 23 were, were you asking? 23. The issue for 23, it was proposed that some text be added. There was no support beyond the person who proposed it. And so I'm saying that that issue is closed with no change to the document. So anyone want to speak to these now or forever hold your peace? Not referring to a gun? Until the last call. Uh, well, until last call. 
All right, so I will go ahead and close these in GitHub and consider those issues closed. That leaves the two open issues. Um, one which has been in GitHub and one which Elliot just, and I don't, we don't even have it in GitHub yet, but open this week, and I'll talk about that in a moment. The first is issue 20, which was Brian's suggestion that most of the occurrences of IAOC in the document actually were more properly IASA. Brian went and proposed a full old new replacement text. Elliot went through them, I believe now has text prepared to replace with, and I didn't hear any objections on the list from what we've got. Elliot, did you wanna to speak to what you've got in there and what you think is ready to go? Yeah, I took all of Brian's proposed changes with one exception, uh, which is uh, he called the uh, meetings committee a subcommittee. Uh, you know, he referred to meetings committee in, in, in some sort of subordinate way to a, a directly subordinate to IASA, and it's really a, a an IOC uh, committee. And uh, as that is the factual case, I, I thought I would just leave the IOC reference in there. It's, I think it's editorial, but just thought. Other than that, I took all of the changes. Barry. Barry. Uh, just because I was looking up issues in the uh, in the GitHub repository, where is a quick link to that? Oh, um, well. And and why isn't it accessible from any of the pages I get to when I look up the working group? It's, the it's certainly on there. the agenda page, but okay. yeah. Um, that would be a good answer. I'll look it up there. Yeah, it, it's on our agenda. Um, if, you, if you go to the meeting venue uh, page in the data tracker, there's an about section. About. And it and should be in there. there. As well as uh, there's a link to the drafts in GitHub. Well. Good. Sorry about that. I should have put it on the slides repeatedly. But All right. So I believe we've got the IAOC versus IASA thing covered. Does anybody have any concerns about that? I love the way this is going. We're going to be out of here in a half hour. Um, all right, so then the only issue left is um, the travel barriers issue. So if you were reading the list this week, Elliot posted a message. Basically, the section on travel barriers, which includes visa requirements, um, got some running code run against it this week because of the San Francisco issue. And Elliot's question was, well, does the text match what actually happened? Now. I believe I posted and uh, that there's a double negative in the current text, and Elliot thought that it actually didn't match what happened. I believe, and John Levine uh, followed up on this, that the text actually does match what happened, but either way, the text needs to be clarified because you can't, it, you can read it the opposite way it's meant. It says that. Um, the vast, uh, the overwhelming majority of people have to be able to get there, which is, I believe what happened in this case was it was decided that the majority was not overwhelming enough of people who could get to San Francisco and therefore the meeting had to move. But the way it's written is very um, upside down with, uh, if not a double negative, it's just confusing. Um, and then they were followed up with a discussion of whether we wanted to attach some numeric value, either percentage or numbers of bodies to, and there was some back and forth about that. Um, I'd like to open the discussion on the latter issue especially, but if folks have comments about how they think it could be better clarified, just the text, that would be useful as well. Mir. Mir Kulevind is individual contributor, just to make sure that you can't leave home, or can't leave in like two minutes. <laughs> uh, I'm, I disagree because I think the meeting was moved because there was a large uncertainty about what would happen. The travel barriers didn't really noticeably change for the participants yet. Um, and the other point about, so like, this is just a guess, right? <laughs> and the other point about um, the decision to move the meeting is also about timing. So if you can make a decision early in advance, it's cheaper than if you have to make a last minute decision. And I don't think that anything about uncertainty or fears that people may have, have which may map reality or not, which lead to people not coming, even so there are no barriers, but you know, just because there might be some at the point where they actually have traveled, this is not captured at all. Just uh, maybe one comment on that, because uh, I don't know if people have the text in front of them, but 
It says travel barriers to entry, including visa requirements, are unlikely to impede attendance by the overwhelming majority of participants. Um, to me, that kind of matches the scenario of what happened. I believe it it can be read to take in the uncertainty, but maybe it needs that interpretation. Maybe needs to be made more more clear. Um, because I already read it that way, that it was trying to take in the uncertainty and being purposefully vague so that it could account for that. But I'm curious to think, you know, hear what others others say and if you have more thoughts on it. Um, hi, Bob Hinden. So I'm on the meetings committee. And so the thing that caused the meetings committee to recommend moving it was the sort of to reduce risk that it would be a successful meeting. And it wasn't, you know, we didn't know what was, no one knows what the, you know, when it's time for people to be getting visas for, the, or for, for what would have been the San Francisco meeting. Nobody knows what the policy will be. And it seemed like there was going to be a lot of uncertainty as to whether there would be policies that would be interfere with people attending the meeting. And there didn't seem, other than some some cost of a cancellation there didn't seem to be a downside to having it there so that that was i mean that's what happened you know in between you know when it was announced in chicago when it first got there, there was first to be action about this so, uh, so i'm not me, exactly sure what the right words are and, and let me put the question to you given the current words do you feel like the meetings committee could have looked at the current words and said yeah, this is a justification for changing things based on what it says in the document. Um, we should go and make the change or we're justified in making the change. Or, or maybe another way to look at it is, I don't think we want to have words that would have kept the meetings committee from doing the right thing. Right. So, I mean, because it was driven not by the words in this document, by, um, by the, the actions in the real world. Right. I, I mean, you would have, uh, what I guess I'm asking is, do the current words make you feel like, yes, we are not doing something against the community's wishes, given the community expressed, it, if the community had expressed it in the document in this particular way? I would tend to think, but I haven't looked at them in today, so oh, yeah. I'm, I'm not. The words up. Yeah. Oh, okay. My guess is it's probably fine, but um, if you want to show me the words. Yeah. Are both here. Oh, well, maybe they should speak. <laughs> there. <laughs> so there are the words. Travel barriers to entry, including visa requirements, are unlikely to impede attendance. Can you scroll back and show the context? Ah, yes, sorry. And and the context is not deeply helpful, which I think again points to wanting to clarify this section in general. Um, but yeah, it goes through a list of what makes for a reasonable venue city criteria. One of them is travel barriers to entry, including visa requirements, are unlikely to impede attendance by an overwhelming majority of participants. Yeah, I don't think this would have kept the kept what happened to have happened. So and would it have encouraged you that, OK, yeah, this is the kind of situation that this anticipates? So do it in the positive and the negative. Would this have said, yeah, this is the kind of thing this community wants us to consider? And so, Leslie, go ahead. Uh, Leslie Nagel. Um, so the I think these venue city, venue city criteria work for evaluating cities at any point in time, uh, which is what the meetings committee does. Um, it was the IOC that actually took the decision to move the meeting based on the recommendation from the meetings committee, as well as the other uh, research that we did as outlined in the note that I sent, however many hours or days ago that was. Um, I think that the challenge I have with this text is I think that it, that this set of criteria identifies candidate locations at any given point in time, but doesn't really speak to the question of when is it a good idea to change, right? So 
did we leave San Francisco because it ceased being a valid venue for the meeting? Did we leave San Francisco because there was a better venue for a more successful meeting that would, uh, where the trade-off of more likely successful meeting was uh, in favor of that rather than the cost of moving? Um, and I think that's what we did. And I think that that means that modulo number of negatives, the wording here is okay. Um, and the challenge is more in the later part when it talks about uh, late changes. And I'm, I'm, I don't have, I reread that text, but I don't have it in my mind right now. And I think yeah, that's sure. maybe where we want to look at the sure. difference. But Elliot, I think maybe disagreeing. No, no, I, I, I think there are probably two problems with the text. It could be that there's a problem down below, but I think there's still a problem above. Um, <clears throat> the problem above is the double negative. Yes. I think yeah. which we 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 right. need to, we need to invert the double negative somehow so it's a positive statement so that it's j just for clarity. Yeah. Um, for for slow people such as myself. I don't usually... disagree. Okay. <laughs> so okay. So that that that's that's problem number one. Um, I think also where we say impede, I think what we really mean is impede or discourage. Um, to be to be more clear. Um. And, uh, but we'll have to turn that again into a positive and I need some wording on that. Then if you go down to um, late where the, the subject, the, 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 the se section entitled uh, late changes. It is a typo and in, in not a typo, but a wordo and it's a, it should be reviewed, not reviews, late reviews, I think. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so this is the text around late changes. Um, this was uh, an initial attempt uh, to address uh, comments that that said, well, you know, um, we don't want to have a, a lot of process in, in the document around late changes. We wanted to have uh, this, this was a stab at a little bit of process to say, here's sort of how the IOC operates. So if there's a change that's needed here, let's. I, I no, and and actually reading it now on the screen here, I think this is fine because gauging the cost of making the change against the ability of the IDF to conclude a successful meeting is exactly what we thought we were doing. Uh, we made a determination based on the information we had from consulting various sources, including the community about moving the dates, uh, and also including people's experiences in coming to Chicago. Um, so while we couldn't very well say, hey, you know, let's, let's have a vote about where we'd rather go, I think that what we did fits in this, and I think I would like to hear from people if they think what we did did not fit within this. Mirja. Yeah, could have been. So I think it actually fits, but also because um, all of the qualifying, uh, quantifying words here are very unclear. Like, like, when does the circumstances have significantly changed, right? And there's another significantly in the other sentence, say, so, and that you know makes the decision again kind of as random as without having the guidance. Well, I, I mean, the, the, the this was a discussion we've had no. for quite some time. Is that you've got to there's got to be a judgment call at some point by the IOC that it is significant, or as in the earlier paragraph, it says unlikely um, that it is unlikely or is likely that people will have trouble getting visas. Um, those those kinds of weasel words. I think have to be in the document just to give uh, enough latitude so we're not in the, well, we think 60 people are, are, can or can't, well, how about yeah, 61, yeah. well, how about 59? But I think actually the word significantly here doesn't really help. So if the circumstances that are important and mandatory have changed, you should reconsider. Mm. Yeah, I think, the, sorry. I think the such that takes care of the significantly. Uh, uh, Brian. Uh, Brian Rosen, um, I, I want to apply what you just said uh, specifically to the to the other section where you use the words significant majority, uh, overwhelming, overwhelming majority. Okay, so majority twelve hundred, uh, roughly twelve hundred things. A majority is six hundred. An overwhelming majority is a hundred. Right. I I would I would like you to come up with another set of weasel words that it leads you to believe that. 2550 is a number that we're starting to worry about and not two, but not 100 or 200, which would most people would consider overwhelming majority of a 1200 meeting person to be 1100. If I may just uh, ask as a point of information from people who are on the meetings committee or people who are working with Ray, um, one of the questions that came up on the list was, you know, we always get some people who are turned away or, or discouraged for some reason. 
do we have some sort of baseline number? Do we have some sort of notion as to where that, that number sits? Philip Erdley saying, just looking at this paragraph and um, harking back to what Leslie said. So I, I think she said when it was being talked about, um, the meetings committee and the IOC were deciding whether to move the venue. Uh, that both that San Francisco still met the um, the meeting criteria that we had up at the beginning, the meeting venue criteria, it still met that, but there was another venue that seemed to meet it better. <clears throat> what that first sentence says, it says, if you don't meet the criteria, then you reconsider. So it doesn't work at the moment <laughs> in my reading. That's right. I think you're right. And, and what I think either Leslie or Bob said was the, <coughs> the issue here was a concern that at some point in the future it might not meet yeah. the criteria and could be changed straightforwardly enough to be sure that we met the criteria. Um, yeah. I mean, I suppose there is <laughs> there's the, there's the question of whether this document as a whole must support the decision that was made, well, I, I or whether mean, it doesn't. <laughs> and so and I think to, to, to Elliot's point of posting this in the first place, we, we would like it to be the case that the document at least does not look insane in the face of running code. <laughs> um, and, and so insofar as we go, well, that's an edge case, and it's OK that it was not perfectly captured, I think that's fine. If we say, this doesn't really represent what the IOC can do and, and feels that they should do, then we probably need to change things. So, Joe Abley, just a quick observation. This text here talks about when the IOC must reconsider. It doesn't say it must not reconsider in any other circumstance. I mean, maybe, maybe it makes sense to be more clear and say it may reconsider anytime it feels like, <laughs> but I think that's implied. This just says, in this circumstance, you have to reconsider. Hmm. Barry Leba, I don't think we want to say that the IAOC can reconsider whenever it feels like, but that's not what I got up here to say. The, um, <clears throat> I think what can fix the, the, the issue that just came up is um, uh, where uh, uh, learns that a venue's circumstances have changed such that the important or mandatory, such that it is uncertain whether the important or mandatory criteria can still be met. Uh, maybe being, that's what being we want to say. completely unwilling to uh, wordsmith live but, hot sure. at the mic, but I, I think that like message that. That's the point is sent is that's to the, the sense is that we, we, we used to be sure and now we're not. This is what I'm trying to get across. Uh, Jordi Palette, uh, I, I, I am late. Uh, it was uh, more uh, concerning the, the previous point that we were discussing, but I was trying to find my email in the mailing list and, and I was not able to find it quickly. Um, I, I think it was a couple of days ago, uh, I mentioned uh, one of the things that I am not really sure is covered with the actual uh, document is, um, are we willing to travel to a country that disallow us to bring our computers on the plane? And I am not really sure that's covered by the actual text. Maybe it's some small change, but I think that's probably key for most of us because if we cannot carry our computers on board, I'm not sure that's a qualifying venue or not. Can I make a suggestion that we treat that as a, uh, we, we, we treat that by considering various chantry in the broadest possible sense? That, that was, I that. yeah, I, I think that's probably my read is that um, travel barriers is to be read broadly. Yeah, um, and I, I wouldn't yeah go there too much either. I mean, I just had to do this last month where I had to check my computer in the, I was on Turkish Airlines from Istanbul. Um, but these rules also change a lot and it was annoying, but it would, didn't stop me from doing anything other than I couldn't use my computer on board. So it wouldn't, you know, as long as, long as you can bring your computer, if you couldn't bring your computer to the meeting, that would be different. But you know, this is annoying. It's not a showstopper. Yeah, 
and and, and 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 I think yeah that Bob's comment goes exactly to we don't want to over constrain the text to make it so that we have to pick out every possible contingency broad travel problems would would be what we're worried about Mira Mira yeah, again so I would actually read in in a more closer sense I would read a travel barrier as something where I actually can't enter the country um, and like a decision because there are some um, stuff I have to do and that brings me to my decision to decision that I don't want to enter the country is maybe something else but I think that should be considered in the same way like if everybody says we just don't want to go there we, we shouldn't hold a meeting there mm. Yeah, I mean, yeah. John Levine, yeah. it sounds like we probably could use some um, weasel words about travel barriers, but I, I vigorously concur with the plan that we, we, we construe travel barriers um, broadly because, frankly, we, we cannot predict where they will be. Like the laptop ban, for you and me, it is a, it's an annoyance. My understanding is there are, there are companies with, with corporate policies that you may not check your laptop because we're worried that they'll be stolen. And for them, you know, that's a deal breaker. And similarly, <laughs> You know, we hear stories about, you know, if we go to a country where you need a visa and the visa offices for some reason are in places that are very hard for a lot of our people to get to. You know, it's like, <clears throat> as we saw on the mailing list, somebody said, gee, there's no Czech consulate, you know, and it turns out there's a, there's a, there's a secret back door that you, you can use, you can, go to, you can go to the German consulate instead and get the same visa, which turns out to be a workaround for that, but we, you can't count on that. So, but since we cannot interpret, since we cannot anticipate these, I mean, maybe throw in a description that travel barriers means travel barriers in the in the broadest possible sense, and, and don't <clears throat> don't try to guess because we're really bad at that. Leslie, Leslie Daigle. Um, so I was just partly trying to respond to this notion of you know is that is not being able to bring your laptop of travel barrier or not? It may be reasonable as an additional venue city criterion to have something along the lines of stating what I would consider to be the obvious, which is the venue city will actually support a productive meeting. <laughs> um, and I, I don't mean that flippantly, because I mean, that's that's largely the basis of, of choices here. It's the ability of the IETF to conclude a successful meeting is what drives where we go. Um, and it's, it's not cut and dried. Um, we already have explored this notion of should we not, should we change a venue because um, of the possibility of having our computers, uh, hard drives explored on entry to the country. And I'm talking about 2000, London in 2000. So um, it's not uncommon. Uh, and the only thing I would say is when, whether we choose to make these changes has to be gated on how close are we to the meeting? Because there's a very big difference between choosing to Move should move IETF 98 out of uh, the U.S. versus moving IETF 102 in 2017. So I just want to summarize where I'm at so far. What I hear Elliot's task to be is got to fix the double negative one way or the other. I'm hearing it is um, so far editor's choice to propose text that either broadens travel ban or adds another bullet to somehow indicate support for the meeting uh, or support for facilities and whatever um, you come up with it'll address Leslie's last comment. Yeah. Does that make sense? It, it does. Unfortunately, I'm, I must admit that I'm struggling on, on, on re inverting the, the double negative. Um, give me the second one again because I think... The second one was plausibly add Another. Oh yes, board. I have it. Okay. So what? Actually, what? what it, was a, it was another. If I understood correctly, it was another criterion that we looked at. Remember, at the beginning, we were a different section where we had a few criterion. Uh -huh. I thought Leslie, if I understood you, meeting. yeah, you it's wanted us to add that as a criterion in section three, whatever it was. Okay, I'll need to see okay. some some text there. But what I was going to do for the. Um, in terms of just talking about travel barriers, uh, what I'm literally going to say, uh, and t tell me if, if I'm off here, um, is the, the term travel barriers is to be read broadly by the IASA in considering venues. That's what I was going to add. Oh, and Ray is now here, so I want to just repeat my question for him, which um, uh, is this. 
if uh, do you have some sort of baseline number for the certain number of people that are on average turned away uh, due to uh, travel policies or, or other things? Ray Pelletier, no. <laughs> that was very dramatic, Ray. Man. <laughs> Okay, so Elliot's probably going to need some help on the removing the double negative text, but we'll certainly do that on the list. Um, okay, Cullen, please. So this was uh, speaking to the last point Elliot was just talking about on the barriers to entry. I, mean, I think it's important that, that as we read that broadly, too, it is read as things that cause people not to, so people to not want to come. Okay, not things that would, you know, legal, like if Canada suddenly required you have a, a maple leaf tattoo to come to Canada, okay, everyone could get a tattoo if they're not, right? It's not like we just can't get them, but wouldn't, some people probably wouldn't want to, right? So I think it has to be those types of things. And I don't want to try and get the specifics of laptops or whatever, but I was involved in another conference that we had to cancel in Africa because of Ebola. And it was a very difficult decision to decide what's the risk of this spreading. And I know we have health stuff, but I, I think, I think it's a I think we need to keep this very open to apply common sense as we have and the running code that they're currently running of chance of a successful meeting is far more important than an argument about whether someone could or could not get into the country. Yeah, and Charles said quietly before uh, maybe the differences between barrier and hurdle, um, but e e capturing that somehow, yeah, I, I, I point taken. Barry. And there are none barrier than I. Thank oh. you. <laughs> Sean Leonard. Also note that travel barriers can change frequently and existing travel barriers at the time of contracting may go away by the time of the meeting, such as the US Argentine entry fee and fee slash tax. Can't predict reliably. Consider it, mention that it can change either way. I agree that it depends how close we are to the meeting. Text to that effect is good. Yep, I think that agrees with where we've been going. Me again. Yeah, I was also wondering if I look at the process that happened this time, if there should be a recommendation, if the uncertainty, uncertainty is very high, that for one specific decision, actually, it's good to survey the community and get some feedback and get actually some numbers that I mean, this is what happened this time. So I guess, um, Elliot, do you have enough to go on? at least to start throwing straw men up on the list to get the feedback you need. Okay, so uh, nothing like a little live editing. Um, the term travel barriers is to be read, in, uh, uh, to be read broadly uh, by the IS in the context of whether a successful meeting can be had. Simply put, I think that should address Colin's point, and I think it addresses other people's point. I, at least I hope it does. Um, then the, uh, to, to invert that, uh, uh, let's claim that's editorial. I'll work with, with Pete, who is very good with words um, and, and has been helping me in other ways. So um, I'll solve that editorially. And then Leslie has asked for consideration of text above. Um, in um, I think there is some text above in terms of the principles, and I'll just need to check to see if it covers this. This would be in uh, the venue selection objectives. And if, if there's something to squeeze something in there, I'll look. But it could be that it's already well covered. And so in that case, I'll leave it alone. So my plan on this one is I'll open up a GitHub issue or two mm -hmm. um, on this set of issues. And uh, yeah, I think, Elliot, you're, you're right. We'll, you and I can hash out a little, and then we'll propose something to the list and, yeah, and, and get something figured out. Um, all right. So I think, have we discussed that enough? I think we're good. All right. So get our slides back on the screen. So we are up to, does magic happen? Next steps. So, um, the plan is Elliot publishes a dash 08 once we get this text worked out. That may take a little bit. Um, after that, we will start a two-week working group last call. 
just to do a final pass, make sure everybody's convinced. As part of that, simultaneously with that, I talked to um, Laura and the Secretariat. I would like the Secretariat folks who sort of pull the knobs and levers of the actual process to do a sanity check of the document because there were issues up front about was this manageable, was this you know workable. I'd like them to simultaneously do a scrub of it and make sure that we have gotten some of the insanity out and kept all the same parts. Um, and that's when I referred to that open issue earlier of you know making sure values match mandatories and things. I think that was part of Laura's initial review, and she's agreed that um, and and it may not be two weeks, but somewhere after last call, working group last call starts, and a few weeks thereafter, she's going to be able to do a review of the document and confirm that and give feedback to the list on that. After that's done and we resolve any outstanding issues that come up during working group last call, then we'll go for publication request. I am hoping this all takes place in the next uh, four to six weeks. That's the plan. Please be ready to notice the working group last call when it hits the list and give the document a final read. All right. Any other issues on the venue selection document that we have not discussed? Yay, love it. Are we ahead of schedule at 4 p.m.? I think we are. We're doing great. I think um, Jordy is the last one left on the agenda. Let me get the agenda back up. Agenda, the agenda slide. I, in fact, when I sent them to Charles, I said, look at the slides. Yeah, that's what they are. All right. Um, so we are well ahead. Um, we have completed Suresh at the beginning. We've taken care of Elliot's document. So we've got the um, meeting network and other technical requirements, which um, Jordy, the, there, there was a copy paste error. Um, it is correct in the meeting materials, but Jordy's uh, individual submission on this, and that's not it. That's the previous document. Um, We'll, we'll update the uh, the agenda to be clear, but in the meeting materials page, it's got a pointer to Jordy's document. Um, so, uh, did you want to get up and, and do I have your slides? I should, but you know, that would probably be way ahead of the game. Let me get there. How many people has read the document? I know at least one person read it because provided inputs. So just one. Materials. That's normal. There we go. Let me get them in presentation mode. One moment. We are ahead Ooh. of a schedule, so no problem. Slideshow. <laughs> uh, how about on the other screen? Hold on. That's what I got to do. Uh, there we go. You. Slideshow. OK, if you can go straight to the second one. Uh, just just for those that uh, don't know the the bit of history of of this document in uh, 2005 I think it was uh, Brian Carpenter has asked me to to work in two documents actually the first one was uh, what Elliot uh, now is taking care more or less it was a different kind of document but more or less I think the, the idea of the contents is is uh, almost the same and also to work on a document describing the technical requirements that, that we have for our network and other other uh, pieces of, of technical things like power and things like that, okay? So not just the network. Um, so the idea was at that point to coordinate somehow both documents, but we didn't have a working group at that time, and uh, well, somehow uh, it didn't move it from there and, and they died. Um, so, 
about a couple of months ago, I think it was in April, I was participating in a in a on-site survey together with with uh, the staff from AMS and uh, and uh, Jim from from the NOC, and uh, in the discussions that we had during that week, uh, we realized that, that it it will be a good idea probably to to have also revive it, this technical document and that's what basically I did. Unfortunately, I, I I had a lot of work and I planned to do that uh, much more time that the the cut off deadline, but I could only finish the weekend before and and uh, I I lacked for some inputs, for example, from from Jim that that was not able to take over. So I expect many many comments from from Jim probably, but I think that in general, uh, what we have in that document right now is quite close to the actual requirements because it was what we have a few years ago and also what I learned during that week visiting, uh, I think we visited eight or nine different venues. And uh, one interesting thing is um, in the document, I don't try to go very deeply into technical details about how many fibers we need to have in every floor or things like that because there are many situations where you can do the same in different ways. So it's it's uh, general, but enough for the the team doing the survey on site from the NOC to take the decision about if the venue will, uh, let's say, survive to our technical requirements or not. Uh, next next slide, please. And uh, yeah, next one. It's a PDF, so you can just go up or scroll down. Yeah. No. <laughs> uh, my computer has. Uh, no. Let's see. Well. <laughs> yes. Do you want to have it? My my computer has decided that it is wanting to do something different. Okay. The computer don't like the presentation, or you don't like the uh, presentation. Well, you know, <laughs> you never can tell with these things. Charles's computer seems happier with the presentation. Yeah. Okay. So the next one. So what I have here is only the table of contents. The 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 goal of this presentation was not actually to discuss about all the details of the document. It's just to to let know the people that the document is there. The table of contents basically didn't change it from what I did in 2005-2006. I improved it, uh, what I realized during the, the week of participating in the on-site survey. And I think I had one new point, which is number nine multi-property building meetings because we discovered the situation that that we really need to to specify something about that and i provided actual input to the other document about the same the same point um so next one please the point here will be i would like to to get uh, inputs uh, i'm not sure if people has not read that the document right now don't don't have too many questions right now but I think it will be a good idea to have this as a working group item as well. So Colin Jenks, just clarifying. I didn't understand what you meant a couple slides. The two drafts. So explain the two drafts to me again. No, no, no. This what it's oh, a, it's from, it's from 2005 of, doesn't matter. Okay. Anymore. It's it's the the number one is it was the the first uh, version of what we are doing now in this working group uh but but it just to, to, to tell you about the history of, of this, not, not, it's, it's not related to the technical draft. So right now we have only number two, okay? This is Barry. I'm not sure that this is a useful thing for early planning. We, we have something saying that the technical requirements of the meeting will be met, right? That basically we can have a meeting. A lot of these network details, we're not going to know until much later in the process. For instance, at the Seoul meeting, uh, we weren't sure we were actually going to have a meeting network for a while during the months leading up to the meeting because of lack of a sponsor for the network and you know who was going to take care of it, and it eventually fell into place and we had it. 
I don't know how much of this we can actually okay. apply at the time we're doing me uh, media there is so there is one section here which is when I'm talking Thank okay you. there is one section here which is section 11 and part of that is explained also in the introduction which explained that during the first approach that we do on the on the survey of the venue which is done typically three or four years in advance uh, we really need to to make sure that we are that 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 venue that facility actually is able to accommodate the network and if we don't have a criteria um well we don't know right maybe jim want to mention something about that sure so let me clarify just because i'm the guy who's been doing it um we absolutely do figure out every detail down to what ports we'd plug things into and what fibers we'd use when we're doing the analysis at the site qualification level the reason for that is we need to nail down what how we would do it if we do choose to lo use location and more importantly if there are modifications that are necessary to the facility to allow us to come I'll use a, uh, an example in this building. Uh, we learned that there was insufficient fiber to really do what we wanted. So we had in the, in the agreement that they would install fiber for us before we came back. And so um, it's critical that we understand what the real requirements are and evaluate potential locations against those requirements. I believe what Jordy's doing here is merely documenting what unfortunately has existed only in my head uh, or some of my team. And I think this is a, laudable thing just because it allows us to have some basis to move forward from. Okay, thanks. The, the last sentence of that is what I was really going to ask you as the bottom line. Is it important for us to have that written down as opposed to just saying we need to be able to put up a network? And you just said, yes, it is. So forget what I said. <laughs> Joe Abley, this might also be extraneous now. I was just going to say that if Jim hadn't said that, if Jim had said we already have these requirements already written down somewhere else and we're fine, thanks, there's still loads of really good stuff in this document. And if this was a BCP of how you do networks at meetings in general, it's still really important to push it out. So I, I don't think it even needs to be in this working group to be I, relevant. I, I found a web page. I think I put it in the mailing list. I think the web page was edited uh, in the IOC uh, website in 2009 and I was comparing bot text and I believe that that web page was based on my initial draft. Uh, I don't know who, who did that web page, uh, Jim can say, but probably that information is what, what it was in my draft in 2005. So this is Elliot. My question is really for Jim, um, actually, so the, and it's really this, which is, how frequently do these requirements change? Hmm. Um, they do not change. Uh, they Well, being that he specifically brought up the last version of the document, that version of the document is, is sadly outdated. And so the fact that there was, I think it was 2009 was the last time yeah. it was updated. And to answer the earlier question, uh, myself and a number of the t members of, of the NOC team worked on that document, Karen O'Donnell, who drove the process. Uh, but uh, the base requir requirements don't change terribly. They do evolve a bit over time, but on the scale of a change every couple of years, maybe three years of, of a substantive, substantive change. For example, one of the things I did, I uh, tried to keep those things that probably will change uh, somehow open. Uh, and one example can be different wireless technologies or more advanced wireless technologies, or for example, in terms of uh, um, bandwidth, bandwidth for the venue. So right now, I think I was suggesting something like uh, one jig links, but probably in the future, I was mentioning that it will be the same uh, cost uh, to obtain 10 jig links, right? So things like that can be can be kept open in such a way that we don't really need to update the document maybe 10 years from now, but not every year or, or anything like that. Okay. Uh, yeah, Charles, I call just as an individual, because um, yeah, I think I remember asking this because in the doc, in your doc, in Elliot's document or draft, I think it has a link to the network requirements, which are the old ones. And, and so, okay, well, well, just just two things. First of all, I think either you know one or the other should go forward, either a draft or a link. So it's not confusing which one. Um, 
I was thinking it might be better to just update the the web page and have a web page that can change, but that really depends. Maybe you can answer that better. But that's what I was thinking. Instead of a draft, perhaps we just keep the web page up to date and change that as needed. I think the advantage of having a, a document uh, as, as a draft or RFC or whatever is first is 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 our way to do the things. Second, uh, you are uh, sure that this is useful not just for you but also for other entities doing similar networks, and we keep updating RFCs every time we need for all kind of protocols. So I don't think updating a, a document is so much different that than updating a, a web page. Actually, I think it works much better because it's something, uh, let's say, more serious somehow. I, I, I agree that, frankly, going through the IETF process on our, our baseline is not a bad idea just because this is being done for the IETF. If people disagree with what we what we have for requirements, then it's worth the discussion. And so I think it's useful to go through the process. That said, we may we certainly need to make sure that there's an easy place to get to the, to this from the various websites because it is often that a potential venue wants to look at what are our requirements for 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 the network. And so having that available in some way that is. Uh, more accessible to, uh, to 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 normal people rather than you know we're all very comfortable with RFCs. The rest of the world isn't. So but I, I guess also that uh, the same that when we finish the 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 other document, uh, there will be a, a a page for for RFQs for for venue selection. We can put a link to to both RFCs, right? So I think that's that's not a problem. So let let's get Ray and Joe and then. I've got some logistical process things that we probably need to discuss. So we we paper these um, these meetings with documents, you know, contracts and MOUs and things like that. And we when we do RFPs, we send out what our requirements are, and um, uh, our requirements change. And will I will we be able to use this document, for example, as part of our RFP? Will I be able to take the circuit information from this and put it in the MOU for the connectivity provider? And um, when will that change? And it, it frankly changes more often than um, uh, than we'd care to admit. Certainly more often than every ten years. So frankly, I think this is kind of heavyweight. I think if we updated the document that was online, it would probably be just fine. And if we updated our RFP requirements, it'd be probably just fine. Again, I don't. I, I like I like the idea that Jim's saying about. Having a discussion. Have a discussion. I, I, I don't think that when you sign a contract, you will copy and paste uh, any of both documents. You just write down the contract, or you have probably a model. So the way this document is write down is generic enough to not force you to change the document to sign a contract. You know what I mean? Um, it should be accurate enough to describe what our requirements are. I I think that that it's it's difficult if if you don't read the document, it's difficult to understand what I am trying to to say. So I will recommend the people to really read the document to 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 know that it's 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 a generic way to describing what our requirements not necessarily uh, need to be part of the contract, the document itself. Okay, Jim. it's a way to evaluate our uh, network, uh, the 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 facility to accommodate our network. Sure, Abby. So two really quick points. It sounds like that last one was Ray saying, "If this is going to be useful to me, one of the requirements for your document is I should be able to say, implement the requirements as, as specified in RFC something, and have that mean something that's acceptable to a lawyer." I don't know. Um, but the other point I was going to make, which is the main point, um, is that one other benefit of putting this in the RFC series and bumping it every now and then is we have a historical record of how we ran meetings, yeah, which otherwise we don't have, and I think that's useful. So, go ahead, Bob. Why don't you, before I jump in? Yeah, I mean, I, so I haven't read this, so I just, um, I, I think there's a couple things it shouldn't be. It shouldn't 
nail down specific technologies because they change. It should be requirements. I don't know if this is should be the thing that Ray puts in the contract or not. I think it probably shouldn't be because I think that has to be more specific and perhaps tailored towards a specific venue. Um, but that's something that Jim, you know, that's why he goes on, does the site visits and looks at the technology in the venue and all of that. This should be the things that we, the community, think we we would like, or what we, you know, what, like the other document. I think we are saying the same. This is for us to evaluate the facility, not to sign the contract, okay? Not to tell in the contract specific requirements that are only in the document. It's just to be able to have a process to evaluate the technical needs. Barry. Sean Leonard, I would like to see more, ho more network hotel considerations. Right now, I understand that IETF-hotel access is mandatory only for the primary meeting hotel. Lots of people end up at secondary hotels. I understand there are costs to setting this up. What are the costs per hotel exactly? Te text proposal. Quote, access to the IETF network must be seriously attempted at at least one secondary hotel and should be attempted for at least one additional secondary hotel, end quote. Additional text proposal, quote, the hotel page for the IETF meeting shall be updated promptly with IETF network access for that hotel, end quote. Additional text proposal, quote, cost estimating for providing such hotel access in future meetings is to be tracked and made available, end quote, end comment. Okay, oh. please uh, uh, send no, no, the no, no, text no, no, no. to the wait, list. Wait, 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 Jordy, please, <laughs> please. One of the things that I, because this kind of proposal is exactly what I was worried about going down the path of before we deal with the more process logistical question, which is, I think, I'm hearing multiple things. First of all, I'm hearing it would be good to have some information as yet undetermined in the archival RFC series about how we do network. I'm hearing it would be good to have some information in a more dynamic form like a web page that could be updated with specifics that could be used and perhaps pieces of either or both would be input into the contracting. That's all fine and an interesting discussion to have. My two questions are, I don't see that as plausibly in charter right now. I, I, I've got the charter on my screen. I'm reading it over. This would be a new charter item as far as I can tell. Um, the, the text that Sean mentioned in the chat room, if it's aimed at this document that Jordy's proposing, okay, that may be a different sort of thing. If this is aimed as general requirements for venue selection, that's a very different sort of thing, and I'm not clear that I want to entertain it as part of that. I think we got out of a bunch of this kind of text in the venue selection document. Um, what I'd like to hear from the room, it sounds like there is general interest in this topic. Is this something that we want to ask the IASG for a new charter item on, that we want to work in this venue on, or I, one of the possibilities is this is more specialized than this working group is probably set up to deal with. Maybe this is a different sort of venue that we need to discuss this in. Maybe this is simply a job for the folks who have the greatest interest in this. I, I'm, I'd like to hear if folks think there needs to be a pointer to something like this in our current documents and therefore makes this more of a, 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 a charter item that we need to add. To be, to be honest, uh, I didn't read the charter. Uh, maybe I read a long time ago, uh, so maybe you're right, but, but it sounds strange to me because it's part of the, of, the, of the criteria for selecting the venue, clearly. Jim? I believe that what we're mostly doing would be documenting an existing system, existing, an existing process. I think that Jordi and I could work on it as an individual submission. I don't think that we need the whole working group, and it certainly would go through... Uh, through I, I, overall IETF review, but I don't think that we need the uh, the, the whole uh, working group involved. But that's my but first. you don't think it's easier to have a working group for it instead of trying to go to the general area? Well, if the point of the document 
is to document existing practice. You don't need a working group to document existing practice. You put out an informational document. The only thing you need to do at that point is just make sure that you have an area director who's willing to say, yeah, that's okay. And Or the IOC can put something out on its stream. I don't know how it does that, but I think that seems like a perfectly reasonable thing to do um, in this context without going through all the working group process. Jim, did you want to address this this point? I just, uh, it's useful that the ops AD is part of my team so he can help us through this process. <laughs> <laughs> I love signing people up for things when they're not here. Oli Jacobson, meetings committee chair. So I would say that having this document and having a pointer to it, like you said, might be useful and I'll leave it to Jim to say whether, whether it is or not. But you know, it might be one of those cases where you can have a host who declares that we, you know, we're sponsoring this meeting and we conform to the network requirements document without having to say exactly what that means. So pointing to the document might be useful in that case because there might be places in the world, I'll leave your imagination to say where, think about where, uh, where spe specifying exactly what that means is not helpful to the host. Thank you. Colin Jennings. Um, I think the group of people that care deeply about visa requirements are somewhat different than the group of people that care deeply about whether it's CAT 5E or CAT 6. And you, though both documents are useful, maybe leaving the NOC to document their process, preferably in GitHub, might be, you know, or best left however the NOC wants to do it. Not, it, you know, not, I think these are separate things, right? So, I, I, go ahead, Barry. All right, I asked Sean whether we really needed the mic for this, but he hasn't answered, so we'll put it. Uh, Sean Leonard says, I agree that I also don't know which document it should go in and whether it's in charter. Okay, so I'm understanding that this room may or may not be completely representative. Um, just want to get, you know how much I love hums, um, but, but actually a show of hands, folks who think that they would, I'm not talking about the working group, that they would be interested in working with Jordy and or Jim on this document, other documents in this area. Are there folks in this room who are of that sort? Raise your hands now. Only a few, okay. Um, I, well, I, I guess I guess the NOC, the people from the NOC is uh, not here. Maybe a couple of them. Well, and so, that's uh, again that goes to yeah. is is the working group the right venue to be working on this, or maybe it's get together a different group of people to be working on it. Because for the working group to work on it, I'm pretty convinced we would have to do at least a simple recharter. It wouldn't be a hard recharter, but it would have to be getting the IASG to approve this as another work item. We are getting close to done, so maybe that's not a big deal, but I'm also not seeing the general population of at least this room the as point, being part of the discussion. Let me, let me have one point here. If we evaluate the venue against the other document and it pass, but it doesn't pass this part, we don't have a venue. So it makes sense from that perspective that it should be in the same page. Now, this is Barry. Not necessarily. The, the, this, the document we already have can say that the, uh, the venue has to support our network requirements. And we can just defer what those are to when this is done. And then, then this doesn't also get in the way of getting the other document finished. Uh, is this an AD comment or a mic comment? Uh, no, very quick uh, yeah. process comment. So I don't. I just look quickly at the charter. I don't think you need to recharter. You would need to add, add a, or maybe only need to add another milestone. But maybe it also fits under the existing milestones. But if you just need to add another milestone, then it's just AD. Yeah, approval, the mi right? milestone so doesn't have to go through ISG. So y your read of the charter is you think we could include this if we wanted to. Yeah, like my very quick read of the charter is like you could okay. if you want to. Jim? I just want to say that the I think the original document, uh, the meeting selection document, 
ha has enough in there to say you need to make make sure there's an uh, infrastructure capable of handling what we need. If what we're doing is generating another document that describes in more detail from a more practical perspective, things that we need to share with other with other entities, things that need to go into contracts, things like that. I don't think that the that they need to be tied at the hip. I think that we've we've already addressed it in the first by saying yes, we've got to make sure we, we address this. Okay, then here's what I'm going to suggest. Um, now at least these folks in the room have been made aware of this. I'll post as a summary of this discussion to the list a who wants to work on this with Jordy and is this a venue that you would want to use to work on this or would you rather do it offline as individual? I mean, those are the basic questions. If having the infrastructure of the working group helps in some way and Miria is saying we could squeeze it into the, the charter, then that infrastructure can be used. If the infrastructure is not going to help folks, if it is just going to be an individual effort anyway, and we're all going to be sitting around twiddling our thumbs and Charles and I are not going to be able to determine whether there's consensus for the document, there's no point in doing it in the working group. Does that make sense to you? Absolutely. And I just wanted to offer, uh, if, you, if you want to call yourself a design team, you could be associated to a, to a working group where you don't have to. You can also just be a design team, and we can give you a separate mailing list if that's helpful. Right. OK. So I'll put that to the list, Thank and you. then um, you can sort of run that discussion if you like. Thanks. All right. Thanks. That was helpful. Any other business? I don't believe so. I think that's it. Any other business? Blue Great. sheets. Should be going around. Who has the blue sheet? The blue sheet is over there. Raise your hand if you need the blue sheet. It'll start heading in this direction. All right. I think that is all. Please do sign the blue sheet and thank you. Yeah, thanks.